symmetry in trigonometry. Now, if I have if I have circular movement or I have periodic functions, something that happens over and over again, so it's the same, the same thing happens. Um, let's see what happens if I use trigonometry to explain the position of a point from a certain distance or so from a certain point. So I'm going to say the origin is where I'm going to measure from and I'm going to calculate what happens with the point X. Now if X goes in a circular direction the radius will always be the same. So the distance from there to wherever the perimeter of the, the circle will be the same. The circumference of that circle will be the same. So the radius will stay constant. At a certain, and I'm just going to draw a random one here. If I get to a point yeah, I can say that this, this distance here equals x, this is my y distance, and that is my x distance. y and x. And remember the radius stays the same, so r is going to be there. When I talk about the unit circle, I say let the radius be 1, but I don't like to use that. I'm going to use r as it is, and what I'm going to do is my first quadrant, I'm going to say the sine of theta, the sine of theta, let me just use red, the, the sine of theta equals <coughs> y over r. The cos of theta equals x over r and the tan of theta equals opposite over adjacent y over x. Okay, no problem. We know what it is. I can use r. Um, the, some textbooks is used now r as 1, which means it's just y, sine theta equals, the, or y equals the sine of whatever that angle is. Now, if I use, if I move the point, if I start at zero, and I say the angle is zero degrees, I can see that that whole value equals one. If I just look at the sign, what happens is if my point moves along the circle, and I'm talking, what, I, what I'm using the pencils for is to look at the distances that changes. So as I move on this point in a circular movement, I can see that here, my x value is a maximum and um, my y value is a minimum. As I go to, let's say, one degree, so if I draw a line now from this point outside, and the angle here is one degree, and I calculate the sine ratio, it's going to be very small because y, the y value, is very small. As I then go on and on for this position of x, I can see that y is getting bigger and this distance, my x distance, is getting smaller. y is getting bigger, x is getting smaller, x is getting smaller, smaller, until x is zero. Now y is a minimum. Oh, so it's a maximum. So y distance here is a maximum. This x is zero now. So I can see that movement out there, y is getting more, x is getting less. r stays the same which means y over r, my sine graph, or my sine value, will get more and more and more and more and more and more and more, until there, where y is a maximum, over radius, y over r will be exactly the same, so y over r will be 1. Okay. So I can say the sine of theta is y over r, and I can calculate if I know what radius is and what angle I'm working with. If I go past this point, if I want to go past this point, what happens now is I'm describing the position of this point. Okay, so I'm describing this, the position of this point. Because this point is moving, and this point I use sine, cos, and tan, trigonomical functions, to explain because I, it makes a 90 degrees um, triangle. If I go to something like 120 degrees, 
I'm not finding the sine of 120 degrees. I'm finding the value of sine of the point when it's there. Now, as I come back, this, tri this triangle, so I actually have to turn this around now, this y value, this um, this y value will start to get smaller smaller again and my x value will get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until I'm down here. Now when I say this value is getting bigger, it's getting actually more negative because there the zero and as I go along that line, this value becomes more and more bigger negative, bigger negative, bigger negative until it is zero, my, x, my y value is zero and my x value is a minimum. Now at a certain point over here, the ratio, that distance there, will be exactly the same as that distance there, which means my two x values is exactly the same, and this y value and this y value is exactly the same. Which means, if I draw that line, we say this is theta, and we say this is theta, and I draw that down, this will now be exactly the same as this. This is y, this is r, but this is now negative x. Okay. But the ratio will be exactly the same magnitude. The ratio of that side over that side will be exactly the same as that ratio over that ratio. Which means, when this position, this dot of mine, this dot on the outside gets to through a certain angle on my outer circle up to there, then the ratio of y over r will be the same here as there. And y over r equals the sine of theta. The ratio of the adjacent side here, x over r, which is still a 90 degrees triangle, will now be exactly the same as that one, but will be, have a negative, angle, uh, a negative value. Okay, so when I ask what is the sine value, for example, I'm just going to do it down here in pink because we're not there yet. So if I ask what is the sine of um, 135 degrees, for example, students ask, but how can I find an angle of 135 degrees? This sine is of 135 degrees. We're not looking at a triangle of 135 degrees. We look at the movement of a point on the outside through an angle of 135 degrees. And that ratio will be then the ratio, the same ratio, because we're looking at the triangle that it makes within here. Okay, so yes, we're still using trigonometry in acute angles smaller than 90 degrees, but we can now refer back to what we have there. So to get to this, to say this, this angle here that we're talking about, I, I, that will be 135 degrees, but I can also say that that's exactly the same as 180 take away theta. So 180 take away, so if this was 45, and this is 45, then 135 will be, that will be 135, which means that I am 45 away from the 180 line. So over here I can say, what is the sine, here's another color, I'm going to say the sine of theta, the sine of 180 degrees minus theta, will be 180 minus, I'm going in a negative direction, this will be the cos of 180 minus theta, and this will be the tan of 180 minus theta. What is that equal to? The sine of 180 minus theta, which is just as big as that angle, will be, I'm talking about this angle, is y over r. This will be minus x over r, and this will be y over negative x, y over negative x. Okay, if I go past this point and I go there, 
up to an angle of theta degrees there. That minus x will be the same distance. This will be exactly the same distance as that, but it will be negative because it's my negative quadrant. And if I go past that point, so if I go follow that past this point, the same thing will happen. This will be the same as that will be minus y. That will still be x, and my radius is always positive. So what's going to happen is that here I'm going to have 100 to explain this angle. The position from D will be 180 plus x because I'm going in a positive direction. So I can say the sine of 180 degrees plus theta cos of 180 degrees plus theta tan of 180 degrees plus theta. What are they equal to? Well, the sine of that angle, because it's about the position, that, that whatever this angle is, is about the position. But the ratio of this acute angle is exactly the same as that one. The only thing that differs is the symbol. So the sine is minus y over r. Minus y over r. For the cos of this angle, will be minus x over r, and for tangent it will be minus y over minus x, and a negative divided by a negative is positive. In the last, in the last quadrant, now remember we call this quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, and quadrant 4. In the fourth quadrant, we're going to have the sine of, and to explain this, we're going to say this is 360 degrees minus. So if I say sine of 360 degrees minus theta, cos of 360 degrees minus theta, and tan of 360 degrees minus theta, what we're looking at is, so what we're looking at is that this equals the sine of this angle here, this will be um, opposite over hypotenuse, so it's minus theta uh, minus y over r. This will be x over r, and this will be minus y over x. So let's just have a quick summary of what is happening. We see that this values, the ratios are exactly the same. The only thing that changes is the signs. In my first quadrant, everything is positive. In my second quadrant, everything except sign is negative. So here, the sign value is exactly the same as that. Over here, everything is negative except tan, which is then exactly the same as in there. In my third quadrant, everything is negative except my cos, and my cos value is exactly the same as that. With that in mind, we can now have a new diagram, another new diagram. What we're going to refer to is the cast diagram. So what we say is everything is positive in my first quadrant. Everything except sign is positive there, everything except tan is positive there, and everything except cos is positive there. Or the other way around. Only cos is positive, everything is positive, sine is positive, tan is positive, cos is positive. So we can say the cast, we call it the cast diagram. So we're always going to have refer to a small angle because we cannot find the sine of 135 degrees. Okay, uh, we, 135 degrees is not a right angle triangle. But when I am in a position of 135 degrees from my origin, the triangle that I get have the same ratio as the one that is in there. And we just have to discuss then what is the value. So just to sum it all up with an example, the sine of 135 degrees is the same as the sine of... So 135 degrees will come from the to there, from there to there.
which means that this will be 180 degrees. Take away and from 180 to 135 is 45 degrees. Okay, so what I say then is this angle is 45. If that angle is 45, then I can say that this angle is exactly the same as the 45 degree angle in my first example. So it's exactly the same as sine 45, which we always call the reference angle. The only thing that we have to check is the sine. In my second quadrant, the sine is positive due to my cast diagram. And this is why this is the sine of 45. And we can do that with our special triangle. Please have a look at how we do the examples that's following. You need to be able to do that.